Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Behind me, you can see the house where Captain William Bly lived and died. The Blue Door. It's 100 Lambeth Road, London. So who was uh, Captain Bly? Well, he's most infamous for being the uh, ill-fated uh, captain of uh, His Majesty's Bark the Bounty. And uh, you likely have heard of um, the mutiny on, on the Bounty, which took place in April 1789. It was the same year as the French Revolution. However, there is no connection between the two events as some have posited, because the, the mutiny took place uh, in the Pacific Ocean and communications were very, very slow. So people had no idea what was building up in France. Most of the sailors would have been illiterate um, anyway. So Captain Bly, uh, he was born um, in um, Cornwall in 1759, if memory serves. His father was a customs and excise officer. Bly, he was um, he enlisted in the Royal Navy at the age of seven. That was a legal fiction because promotion was partly based on the number of years before the mast. So by the age of 27, he could claim that he'd served for 20 years, for instance. Um, so this was often done. Little children signed down as being part of the Royal Navy, even though they didn't actually go near a ship for several years. But he was 12, he really did join, and um, his naval career is very well recorded, taken down in all its particulars. So he served with many of the most distinguished naval commanders of the day. Anyway, in 1789, his mission was to sail to the Pacific and recover breadfruit and bring it to the West Indies, where those held in servitude would be fed by it. That was partly a blind. People say the ulterior purpose of the mission was to fly the flag in Tahiti. The British were worried that the French would get in there first, or Tahiti as it was known then. Actually, it failed in the long run because it did become um, uh, French much later, like the 1960s or 1860s. So um, that was Captain Bly. And he was good friends with a chap from the Lake District called Fletcher Christian. Now, um, uh, Christian is depicted as a bit of a pop and jay. Thing is, there's that Mutiny on the Bounty film where there have been five iterations thereof. The first one, going back to 1916, a silent film. It ch shows you just how perennial this tale is. And the most recent one was 1984, if memory serves, with Anthony Hopkins um, playing Bly. Um, so, uh, I remember meeting an Australian mariner who said, if ever a man's reputation has been trashed by Hollywood, it is the ill-starred William Bly. Uh, and if you look into the records, you see that he simply um, rebuked his sailors when others would have had them flagellated and he flogged them when others would have had them hanged. So uh, he's not necessarily the martinet that he's gone down in history as. Uh, and the scintillating thing is how he and Fletcher were firm friends, but um, oh, it all gang awry in 1789 when they were sailing back from Tahiti. They spent five splendid months there and uh, as Bly himself uh, wrote, the allurements there were beyond imagining, as in um, the Tahitian ladies were very free with their affections, it was ideal weather, you didn't have to work, there was fruit, there was fruit going free, and all the rest of it. So, um, cut a long story short, he pushed the sailors a bit too far one time, and there was a mutiny at night led by Fletcher. Notably, Fletcher Christian did not kill him, and almost half the crew sided with Captain Bly, so they're put out in a boat, uh, in a small boat, Bly and I think 19 other sailors. There were a few others who were not put on because it just would have sunk. They were only a few inches above the water line with a few of the necessaries they had and that was that. So Bly then navigated 3,600 miles across the sea without a chart. That in itself is the most staggering feat of seamanship. Got all the way to the, the, the Netherlands East Indies. We now call it um, Indonesia and all the way back to London eventually, although it's no proper ship after he reached Indo Indonesia. So Fletcher Christian and his uh, friends knew that the Royal Navy would be coming after them. Now discipline was severe in the Royal Navy. You've got to remember just how cheap, cheap, cheap life was. People were executed for, for stealing a shilling in those days, including children for stealing a shilling. Um, and these, these sailors, some of them were uh, former criminals. It was a very rough and ready times. And if discipline was not savage, then more of them would, would desert or indeed mutiny. Um, Life expectancy was very low. A lot of people were on the edge of starvation most of the time. Anyway, so Fletcher, Christian and his friends, how were they going to escape the long arm of the law? Well, they knew about Pitcairn, Pitcairn Island and they realised it had been incorrectly mapped. So the uh, Royal Navy had previously got the, let me think about this, the uh, longitude, no, the latitude of it correct, but the longitude was wrong by 600 miles. 
So they were able to go there knowing that the Royal Navy wouldn't find them for a very long time. And indeed they were correct. The Royal Navy didn't come there for about 25 years, by which time Fletcher and his accomplices, all but one of them had um, been called to their reward. They picked up some Tahitian women making good their escape, and indeed men, for a party, raised the anchor and sailed away, abducted them. Um, and then they took these uh, as girlfriends, but they shared them around. But um, anyway, it was a tale of murder and mayhem on Pitcairn Island where they were fighting um, over women and they sometimes killed each other. But uh, Christian's descendants still reside on Pitcairn to this day, although there was a, a rather distasteful scandal at Ashant Lim just now, about 10 years ago. Uh, so that is Captain Bly. He came back to London, defend himself before the Admiralty Board, and he went on to have a distinguished career. Sent uh, to Terra Incognita Australis again, which had just been settled by the First Fleet the year before mutiny on the bounty. Um, and uh, he was briefly governor of New South Wales. Uh, however, there was a mutiny against him again. Some of his own soldiers ousted him. They didn't kill him. For a while, they, after a while, they didn't even lock him up. Would London accept this or not? That was the moot point. And then finally, he was back here in the United Kingdom during the Napoleonic Wars, but there was a third mutiny. It wasn't against him particularly, a more over broader concerns, general grievances of pay and conditions. Um, now, uh, as Oscar Wilde might say, you know, once or twice might be bad luck, but three times looks like carelessness. Anyway, by this stage, his reputation had suffered. And um, remember, Christian had taken some Bly loyalists on the ship because they just couldn't go out in that open boat. It would have sunk, and he needed them for their competence. These men eventually made it back to, to London, despite Blind saying, I'll remember that you were steadfast, that you Fletcher forced you to stay on the ship. Um, some of them were, were wrongly hanged for, for mutiny. But anyway, those of them gave an account of what really happened and Bly's reputation plummeted. Um, so he retired here to London and considerable comfort, and uh, he uh, died in 1817. He's buried not far away at the Garden Museum, that old church right beside Lambeth Palace. Well, William Bly, a uh, scintillating character, who uh, unfortunately the Chronicles um, have uh, perhaps unfairly recorded as being an overly stern disciplinarian, which by the standards of the Royal Navy at the time is really saying something when it's supposed to be rum, sodomy and the lash, as Churchill was to say um, over a century later. It is now a guest house, so you can go and stay in Captain Bly's house. <laughs>